Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Shunk booth here at the RIA Robotics Week. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is J.D. Norris. I am an engineer here at Shunk, a part of our automation team here in the U.S. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the PGN Plus P gripper and the accessories for this item. Uh, the PGN Plus P is the culmination of 30 years of, of active design and experience with this particular gripper family. Uh, it's a two-jaw parallel gripper with uh, increased guidance, larger piston area, uh, permanent lubrication. Um, essentially, it's a gripper that is robust, reliable, and will get just about any job done for you. So if you come on in, we'll talk a little bit more about the accessories here with PGN Plus P. So starting off with our basic PGN Plus P, uh, you can go a number of different directions with the amount of accessories that you use. Uh, starting off with mounting to the base of this gripper, we can talk about our VB, which is an integrated valve box uh, with direct connection right into the base of that gripper. Uh, it's controlled over here on the side with this M8 uh, connection port, which is going to control uh, the valves inside, so to open and close your gripper. Uh, you also have an LED indication light to tell you which side you're on to. Uh, this is going to be used to reduce cycle times. It's also just a really clean way of getting your airlines and connection ports to that gripper. You just need one airline coming from your robot, it's not too messy, and you can go right from there. Uh, here we have the CWS, which is a manual tool change system, which consists of a tool side adapter, which mounts right to your PGN Plus P, and a tool side which can mount to your robot. Um, some of our larger sizes will even have ISO mounting patterns, 31.5 all the way up to ISO 80, uh, to just get that right to your robot. Uh, they're used and actuated using these small uh, hex screws here on the side to unlock and relock position. Uh, really, it's just a good way of quickly and simply changing that gripper. Um, it's also adaptable to a number of different other gripper families because you have the same mounting points. So you can go from an angular gripper to a fully sealed gripper to the PGN plus P gripper all in one. Here we have a TCU, which is a co tolerance compensation unit. Uh, this particular unit is once again directly mountable to the PGN plus P. Um, we'll also have sizes that will mount right to your robot. Um, this is going to be used for angular compensation. So if you have an application where you might run into some binding, you can compensate for that. Uh, typically we see it in situations where maybe you're gripping a part that's been cast, so you're not gripping the exact same dimensions every single time. There's some variability. This can help to compensate and allow you to pick up that uh, part over and over again. Here you have an AGE unit. This is the AGE uh, XY. Um, the difference here with the TCU is that while the TCU gives you your angular compensation, this particular unit is lateral X and Y compensation. So you use this specifically um, in situations, maybe you're machine tending, maybe you're loading a gripper, or excuse me, a part into a rotary chuck and it doesn't quite align with your setup. This will actually allow that chuck to grab on it. This will float and you can get that perfectly aligned. The stroke can be um, adjusted here on the side in these two positions here, so you can choose that. Um, it's directly mountable, number have ISO patterns to your robot, and this particular unit, as you can see, will mount directly to the PGN Plus 64 or the PGN Plus P80. Uh, so it's very adaptable there. Here we just have a um, look at a da standard adapter plate that's gonna go into our modular assembly automation line, which is a line of a number of different uh, linear actuators and products uh, for your pick and place applications. So we come back out, we can start you know, looking back again at that gripper. Um, at the gripper body, we can see over here we have a micro valve set, which is similar to this VB where you're gonna have control of the valving right here at the A and the B ports. Uh, you got your um, fitting here and they connect right in there. It's for really rapid, quick actuation time uh, just to reduce your, your, your cycle time, to get more cycles in. Here we have a PGN Plus P variant. Uh, this is an AS version of the gripper. This means that in this extra additional base, you have a spring assist to close. So there's a spring inside here. Um, you see this used for one, to be able to have a little bit more gripping force in this same gripper body, you don't have to get up to a bigger size to hold your part. Also, in the event of an e-stop or emergency situation, uh, you're still going to have that spring gripping on that part. 
uh, whether, rather than relying on air pressure. Here's another variation of that gripper that uh, is the uh, SD version or the dust cover version. This dust cover, as you can see, consists of a number of different plates and O-rings mounted to the top face over those jaws and also the side to protect the guidance there. Uh, it's specifically used for ingress protection. You go from an IP40 rating of the standard PGN Plus P to all the way an IP64. Um, so again, it's for ingress protection. You can buy the, uh, the gripper pre-assembled with this dust cover kit. You can also get it to retrofit grippers out in the field. It's a 15 minute process probably, and is really, really easy. Here we have the HUE, which is another cover that we have for ingress protection. This goes from uh, an IP64, of the, or excuse me, IP65. This is IP65, which is more designed for liquid ingress so you're keeping those liquids out and you can see that's done through this rubber boot here which is a uh, PVCP material with these um, locking sides on here all right so coming back up so not only do you have a number of different options to be able to just pair with the gripper as far as what you can mount to the base but you also want to be able to change those fingers as we know with gripping fingers is is probably one of the most important aspects just because there's so much variability. Your part's always gonna be different. Um, and those fingers are always, or for the most part, usually designed specifically around that part. So sometimes you wanna change if you have batch sizes and adjust from there. So here we have the BSWS B system, which, or excuse me, B8 system, which is a mountable block that goes on the dripper jaw. It works directly with the BSWS A, which is a pin. Uh, this pin mounts to the finger and then can be inserted into this lock, this locking block. There is a hex screw wrench on the side that you lock in place and you set that and you're good to go. This can be for rapid change out of different fingers. As your parts change, you can change fingers as well just as easily. Here we have some BSWS, uh, ABR, and SBR. These are a variation of that initial system we just saw, but in this case, you actually have the locking mechanism in the finger as opposed to a different body. So here, you have these finger blanks, which again, can be machined for your part, and the locking mechanism is inside here, works with the pins, and the pins mount directly into the gripper jaw this time. So it helps you know, keep that stack up a little um, smaller, and it's also just a nice blank that you can use right away. Um, on that same subject, you can actually just buy the locking mechanism. If you want to design your own finger or need to design your own finger, whether it be maybe it needs to be longer than the base or you need to come out in some fancy design position, you can just purchase this and design it right there in your finger so it can be implemented with these pins as well. Here we have a UZB system, which is a manual um, finger adjustment system. What you have is a rail that installs right onto the gripping jaw, and you have your finger mount on this sliding carriage. So what you do is you unlock that, and that way you can slide it out. Uh, you can adjust for different part size ranges, maybe going from very small to very large, and you don't have to change your fingers, and you can just adapt it for that. Lock it in place, you're good to go. Here we just have some standard finger blanks that we often see used by customers. It's a really simple way to get that product up and running. You can machine it to your part or just use it as is. Um, they are designed to adapt obviously directly with the PGM Plus P, but also you can pair them with the BSWS A system if you needed to use those as your finger blanks for changing. Here we have an intermediate jaw which just allows you to change that mounting point from the jaw. So instead of mounting directly to the top base of that gripper, you now mount off here to the side. Perhaps you have some fingers pre-designed that would fit into there, or you just need to change up how that uh, finger is mounted. So all right, now we've seen a whole lot of the uh, immediate accessories for the PGM Plus P body. Now we can take a little bit closer look at some of the sensing options. So now we can talk about some of the sensing options for the PGN Plus P. 
Up here at the top, we're looking at our MMS sensor line, which is gonna be a line of electronic magnetic sensors that fit in the C-slot of our grippers. Uh, the C-slot is shown here and is right central in the gripper along the axis of how that piston travels. So the MMS-22 shown here is the simple version of that sensor. It slides into this slot and is adjustable up and down uh, depending on what position you want to sense. How it does this is there is an embedded magnet on the piston that corresponds to that slot and as the piston travels up and down, you can hit a let location where it's gonna sense, and that sensor is flagged. Here we have the MMS PI-1 or the PI-2. Uh, the sensor's the same size for either version. The PI-1 is a one sensing position sensor, and the PI-2 is a programmable two position sensor. Uh, basically, this sensor will slide right into the slot. There's a stop that comes uh, right there in the gripper when ordered. Slide up into that stop, tamp it down, and then you use an actual teach tool to teach the positions that you want to. Here we have an HD version of the MMS sensor. This is a stainless steel housing, also a little bit more robust cable uh, for those more heavy duty applications. Uh, here you can also see a lateral cable outlet version of our sensors where you have this 90 degree bend as opposed to the straight come out 180. Uh, these sensors are available with M8 connectors, M12 connectors, um, and even flying leads, depending on your, your requirements and your situation. Uh, the, M, uh, the pigtail as well for them is about 30 centimeters. Here you have the MMSP sensor, which is very similar to the MMSP I2, only in this case, as opposed to having a teaching tool after you tamp it down, you actually have this programmable fob. So there's a little button here as well as an LED, and you teach the sensor that way. Here we have the MMS-A, which is an analog position sensor, which will fit right in that C-slot in the same exact position as the other programmable sensors, except this time the analog output will vary depending on that magnet location, so you can know where your fingers are um, in the entire position of that stroke. So it's a very useful sensor. So we take a step back now, we can take a look at our inductive proximity sensor line. This line of sensors mounts on the side bracket here on the PGM plus P inserts here. There's a stop uh, on the inside right here in the jaw, so you don't have to adjust that sensor too much. Just plug it in and you go. It actually senses this flag that's on the inside that travels with the jaw. On one side, direct from the factory, you're gonna have a fully open positioned flag. On the other, you're gonna have the fully closed position flag. Uh, those can also be adjusted for your part present sensing. Here we have the IN80 which is the simple standard version of that. It comes with an M8 connector, M12 connector, or flying leads uh, options. Here you have an IN80-SA, uh, which again is just a lateral cable outlet for that variability to figure out what you need for your application. Here's the INC80, which is a cableless uh, inductive sensor. This sensor, uh, well, it does need a cable. You, know, you pair it with a cable extension or a cable connector, depending on what situation you have. Uh, really, it's used to avoid uh, the connection point that's 30 centimeters down the pigtail of these other sensors here. So it's a little bit more varying there. Here at number 11, we have the FPS M8, which is a five position magnetic sensor. It pairs with a uh, teaching box, so you can store up to five different positions and use it that way. It's a really simple, adaptable sensor. Uh, here you have the APS-Z80, which is another analog sensor, and this sensor will mount in the C-slot of the gripper. The difference here is that it also requires a different um, attachment kit that replaces this flag here. It's actually a ramp flag, uh, and just like with standard analog sensors, as that flag moves, there's a different uh, level variance there, so you are affecting that analog output. Here at 13, you have another analog sensor. This one is the M1S sensor. Uh, it will use the same sort of kit with a ramp uh, installed into that uh, flag position. And the difference here is that as that ramp moves in and out, as that jaw moves in and out, you actually adjust this plunger here. And that's what corresponds to the analog output that's coming. Uh, here, very last, we have an RMS, which is a simple read switch. Uh, it's a pretty much a uh, very inexpensive 
a sensing option that has an MA connector, just simple and can be applied. So just as we talked about, you know, really all of these options just allow you to build a gripper around your exact application. If you need multiple different finger styles, perhaps you need quick change, TCU aspect, you can all put that together and create exactly what you need. You're able to build the PGM Plus P around your exact application. So it's a simple modular process uh, that you don't need any special components. So thank you again for joining us here at Chunk again today and enjoy the rest of the week at RIA. Thank you.